everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase, Cybersecurity. This is season three, episode three of the ongoing series that covers exciting startups from the AWS ecosystem. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and today excited to be joined by CUBE alum Ed Kasmer, founder and CTO, Cloud Storage Security. Ed's here to talk about when data becomes dangerous managing the security posture of data in AWS storage. Ed, great to see you again. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Lisa, I appreciate it. So as we talked about before, data continues to migrate to the cloud. You shared some really compelling stats from Enterprise Strategy Group. Share those with the audience. I think it would be really compelling for them to understand what's going on. Yeah, certainly. So uh, data itself, we understand that cloud storage has grown massively over the last few years. But when you look at the actual context of the overall storage capacity, only 7% of organizations today show that they've moved more than 50% of data uh, to the cloud. And if you think about that then, you know how do we interpret that? That just means a lot of organizations, the vast majority, 93% have not moved that much data and there's that much more to go. The, the estimations are that we'll probably see that number quadruple over the next couple of years, somewhere near the 30% range will finally get more than 50% of the data to the cloud, but that's still a, a minor piece. And if you if you see how much storage is there, it's a massive number to continue to grow. It is, that those numbers are staggering. And we see you know, customers in every industry are using data to provide customer services and or make better decisions, improve business operations, but data is increasingly becoming a liability. When does data become dangerous, Ed? Walk us through what that even looks like. First, I would just start by considering all data dangerous, but there are three particular cases to that. One is when the data is unknown. Another is when it's riddled with issues, uh, payloads, you know, malware. And another is when it falls into the wrong hands. And, and we can dive a little deeper on those. Like, what does it mean that data is unknown? In my mind, it means a couple of different things. It means that we don't know where the data or the source but it also is this notion that organizations really don't have a clue about what data they have in their environment. And that's the unknown aspects. There are certain data paths, but outside of those data paths, they really don't know what data they have. If we talk about you know, the second piece there, being riddled with, with payloads, the notion there is the stats prove to us and show to us that one in two organizations are being attacked by ransomware on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. That is really, really frequent. And the third piece there, going into just a little bit more, data falling into the wrong hands is typically a configuration issue. It's not always just a, a brute um, uh, entry into the environment. It's not so, like someone's uh, compromised a system per se. And, and it proves to us by saying, what data is being compromised? What data is being lost to customers? And it was really interesting findings that we worked with ESG on. And it's about a third of the customers are losing it from file stores. So whether these are network file shares or these are block storage attached uh, to computers, 34% um, of organizations are losing um, information from data lakes. And then the, the number that maybe isn't as surprising, but still was, was a little, is that 42% of organizations are losing information from their SaaS applications. And whether that's the SaaS application being compromised or how they've configured it themselves, they're losing data. So it's a wide array of where people are losing their data. It is, and it's also, it sounds like it's a technology, a process, and also a people challenge. Talk about data be being unknown. You mentioned ransomware, and I read a stat recently that a ransomware attack happens once every 11 seconds. It's no longer, <laughs> Are we going to get hit? It's when? It's what's the exactly? And you're talking about then, of course, data falling into the wrong hands. So, so, what data security management challenges are organizations facing today with those three kind of classifications of data becoming dangerous? Talk us through some of the business challenge and, of course, the security challenges as well. Yeah, definitely. So, there's there's two different fronts here. You know. It, it was related to um, the notion of how people have adjusted to cloud in general. We've moved to the cloud, we, we focused on compute in the early days, but now we have to focus on storage as well. So when we look at the business challenges, we're looking at uh, areas where data proliferates massively, whether that's backups now that are being pushed to the cloud. Um, it's the notion of having 
infinite resources versus finite resources on prem where you you couldn't just make tons of copies of data and put it in places because you didn't have the places to put it now you can so when we look at the business challenges it's really about how do i control and and become aware around my data and that's you know this proliferation issue the security team is now focused on data as much as they were on compute where we had shadow it before now we have shadow data and it's easy to make a copy of a production database and put it someplace to start running reports against and doing more activity against. But it's very hard for the security team to understand who's done what with that data and how you're securing it. Shadow data, that's that seems kind of like a scary uh, outcome for organizations not being able to manage that, but also having it proliferated and copied, as you said. I'm curious, how do you help business teams and security teams come together to really start fighting and dialing down the dangerous nature of data. I imagine it's got to be a collaboration between those two teams. Oh, absolutely. So it, it really comes down to there's a new kind of tool set coming out that's focused in and around the data. And we're participating in that. We're one of those tools that can help you with that. And what are you really trying to do? To empower both the business side and the security side, you need to give them visibility and you need to give them control. And you know the, the business side wants visibility, the security side wants control. So how is cloud storage security helping with that? Well, we provide a tool that locates the unknown data. So you get that notion of there is no more unknown data because you can find everything across all of your infrastructure. We also help you scan that data. So we touch the data itself, we make sure it's safe to use, but we also are classifying it. We're looking at the contents of that data and making sure it's not too sensitive. Um, you know, one of the big stats that we keep seeing out there is that there are customers that don't know what they've lost. So 39% of organizations indicate they have lost some sensitive data from the cloud. And 20% on top of that say, I don't know, maybe I've lost sensitive data because I don't even know what sensitive data is out there. So we go through that and we, we give you that aspect. And, you know, there are multiple ways to lose data, as we mentioned. One of them is the configuration aspect. So we're giving you a best practices review of all of your data stores to say, are you doing the right things with that data? So with a little bit of visibility, a bunch of control and a bunch of scanning or touching of that data to really tell you what you have, we can help those organizations solve both the business requirements as well as the security requirements. Yeah, it sounds like really being able to give them that visibility and the control that they really haven't had. I was doing some research on, on you guys and saw that over the past three, plus years, you've located and scanned over 5 billion files in cloud storage for customers. This is customers globally. Can you share a customer case study, Ed, that you think really shows that when data has become dangerous and what you guys help do to mitigate that risk? Yeah, absolutely. This It really puts it into context when you, when you look at this particular case study. We've been working with them again recently. It's been a, a year long project, but just over the weekend they, um, migrated another few hundred million files just in the weekend alone. And really some really interesting stats come out of that with the number of infected files found. It's, it was hundreds of millions of files, but there were 88 pieces of malware found inside of that. So um, you don't need it to be more than one. You know, one bad file leads to bad things. But we have a, a financial services company that we've been working with and their scenario, it's an intra-country migration. And it has these um, requirements that they can't take physical data across uh, from country to country there. So they're doing it through the cloud. They're migrating that data from one spot to another. And so it, they're using multiple means to do that. So there are lots of ways to get your data around. There's replication, there's data syncing. Um, one of the things that they're using is transfer family, AWS transfer family for managed file transfers. So they're using multiple mechanisms and they need support across all of those to one, make sure their data is safe to use, and, and two, to make sure it's classified. If we look at their requirements, their requirements for this migration was that every single file, every single piece of data that comes from um, the other country uh, company to, to their, their country company um, needed to be touched. They couldn't let a single piece in to their production. And so what they did is they created a staging area. All data is migrated into the staging area it's scanned and validated and classified there, and then moved on to production consumption where their, their internal employees and other consumers can take that data and move it forward. They were driven by compliance and, and mandates. Regulations in the financial industry required that they be able to identify and document all pieces of data coming in for sensitivity and, and otherwise. 
And, and they required us to also help them. How do you keep track of what you are finding? Those 88 files that we found just over this past weekend alone, in, on top of the other um, millions and hundreds of millions of files they've scanned earlier in the year, has to be dealt with in some way. And so they have third-party tools that they want the notification sent to. They're using internal AWS pieces like Security Hub that, that where they aggregate their findings. And they required a tool that could integrate with all of those. And we happen to do that as well. That's critical. You mentioned finding all that malware, and we talked about you know the ransomware stats. And I was wondering, how does cloud storage security partner with other or, uh, other technologies? And you just done a great job explaining that because once you find the payloads, they need to be eradicated as quickly as possible before it's right. throughout the organization. Talk to us about some of the other key use cases that you guys are solving for customers. As every company, regardless of industry, is a data company these days. Yeah, you know, the data is the lifeblood of the company. It helps you make good customer decisions. It helps make business decisions. If data is, is shrinking, you've got other problems to go solve for in your business because data grows. When a company is growing, the data grows. And as a result, you have to touch and manage all of that data as well. When we look at some of the other customers that we have and the others facing this, what we're seeing now is a lot of these companies that are our customers have their own customer sets as well, whether they're a SaaS service or, or a global management consulting uh, company that we're partnering with right now to go through this process of touching hundreds of their customers and their data to provide that visibility and control uh, on behalf of their customers. So it's a very common use case. Data is massively growing. If we just look at the probably the biggest data store that there is out there right now with Amazon S3, if you look at what's happened just over the last 10 years, it's over 20,000% growth. They're, they're into the hundreds of trillions of objects category now. And when we see people migrate and we see people re-architect for the cloud, it often goes down this road of, I'm going to change my storage structure as well. So the tools and the technologies in place have to account for that. They have to be able to meet the cloud native requirements to do security properly and at scale. Got to ask you a quick question on the security front. You know, we, we talk a lot about this, the skills gap in security and it's, it's been prevalent for a long time. A lot of organizations yeah. are, are doing a lot. Is there an, a, an element here where cloud storage security can help organizations dial down or kind of make that gap on the security side smaller with the technologies that you're delivering? Absolutely. You know, there, there's a couple different ways to solve cloud. None of them are manual. You know, the, you, do, you start manual when you're on your journey early. You've got to automate and you've got to be simple. If security is complex, you won't implement it and you won't keep, keep it up to date. So cloud storage security is a, a sub 10 minute install. Our goal and, and part of our driving mantra is to make security simple and to give you really simple tools that you can put in place and expand across your entire organization. And it doesn't take a PhD in cybersecurity or someone who's worked at a major firm for 20 years to be able to implement it. Make security simple. I love that. I'm sure that's music that's right. to the ears of security teams everywhere. <laughs> Give us a little peek at Into the Roadmap. You're the founder and CTO. What are some of the things that we can be on the lookout for where cloud storage security is concerned? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're again, trying to drive forward the simplicity model. We're trying to expand data sets. You know, the more data you can touch, the better. We're very focused on unstructured data so far because uh, that's been one of the, the um, primary gaps that we see out there, but there's going to be movements to more than uh, structured data or unstructured data. We'll, we'll move into structured data. We'll move into better business intelligence. You know, there's this whole AI conversation going on right now that people are trying to find good uses for. Security is a perfect use case for AI. Doing evaluations across all of your data sets. When you find one bad thing here, we can start to model and look for other things that look like that. Well, because maybe we'll find bad things there. And so it gives us intelligence around, well, what data should we protect? And so it's not just a wide scale, let's look at it all, which is the default answer right now. You should look at it all until you have a better answer. But I think there are things that we can bring AI into, we can bring that in and, and figure out better answers for our customers. And again, drive simplicity, make it really smart and really intelligent for the consumer. Awesome, good stuff. We're going to be keeping our eyes peeled. Last question for you: Where can the audience go to learn more? I know they're going to want to. Yes, yes. We we certainly hit us up on our website, cloudstoragesecurity.com. You can uh, find us at cloud-storage-security on LinkedIn. 
And then, of course, we're in the AWS marketplace. We transact through the marketplace uh, quite frequently, and we offer a free trial there. So kick the tires for 30 days. You get 500 gigs of data to test this out on, whether that be malware scanning or data classification. And you can find us there. And we're always happy to help. So email you know, us at support at cloudstoragesecurity.com, and we're happy to help you guys out in any way. Awesome, Ed, thank you so much for coming on the program as part of the AWS Startup Showcase Cybersecurity. Defining dangerous data, the challenges it presents to organizations, but also the mitigations and what you're doing to keep security simple. We really appreciate your time and your insights. Thank you, Lisa, I appreciate it. My pleasure. We want to thank you for watching and remind you to keep it right here on theCUBE for more action. Your leader in tech coverage.